Hi, welcome to the lecture number 9.3. In this lecture, I will teach you how to configure a timer in input capture mode and PWM input mode. So, let's get started. After finishing this lecture, you will be able to configure your STM32 to measure the square wave signal frequency and then measure the PWM signal frequency and also the duty cycle. Input capture mode is used for capturing the times of events such as rising edge and falling edge. The counter register is in free running mode. It means that the counter value will count from zero to maximum value and then back to zero and count again over and over. When an event occurs, then the counter register value will be saved. The input capture mode can be used for measuring the frequency of a digital signal. In this lecture, I will show you two examples. In example 1, I will configure the timer in input capture mode to measure the frequency of a square wave signal. And then in example 2, I will configure timer in PWM input mode to measure both the frequency and the duty cycle of a PWM signal. This is the example one. In this example, the timer is configured in input capture mode. The counter register will count from zero to maximum value over and over. And then whenever there is a rising edge on input signal, then the counter register value will be saved. With two successive capture value, you can calculate the duration for one cycle of the signal, which is 12 minus eight. And with the counter clock period information, you can calculate the period of the input signal. Then, if you know the period of input signal, you can also calculate the frequency. Here in group MX, I will configure timer 3, timer 4, and UR2. Timer 3 is used for input capture, while timer 4 is used to generate a PWM output signal. This PWM output signal will be used as an input for the input capture pin of the timer tree. The UR2 is used for sending the frequency value to the PC. In timer tree, enable the internal clock and then enable the channel 1 in input capture direct mode. In timer 4, enable the internal clock and then enable the PWM generation mode. After that, go to clock configuration. I set the sysclock value to 72 MHz and then go to configuration. Configure the timer port. Set the rescaler to 18 and the period to 1024. This is the same setting as in the previous lecture. So if you calculate the frequency of the PWM signal, the result is about 3.9 kilohertz. Here you can set the PWM mode 1 and then you can enable the fast mode. Set the pulse to 384 so the duty cycle is 37.5%. Click OK and then configure the timer 3 in input capture mode. Set the reload value of the counter pedal value to the maximum value. And then after that, you can set the polarity selection to rising edge. So whenever there is a rising edge on input pin, the counter value will be saved. After that, go to NPIC settings and then enable the timer global interrupt. The interrupt will be occurred whenever the counter value is captured. Click OK and then you can generate the code. In my .zip file, Add the string.h library and then add these variables for storing the first and second capture value, the difference, and then the frequency. In this line, you must start the timer 4 in PWM mode, and then in this line, you must start the timer 3 in input capture mode. In main loop, these codes will transmit the frequency value to PC every 2 seconds by using UART. 
and then here in this line there is a capture callback function this function will be called inside the interrupt service routine here we save the first input capture value after that here we save the second input capture value and then we can calculate the difference and finally we can calculate the frequency this is the result i connect the pwm output pin of timer 4 to the input capture pin of timer 3 then i open the serial monitor Here, the frequency is printed to the serial monitor. The frequency is exactly the same as we calculated before. Okay, in example 2, I will configure a timer in PWM input mode. In this mode, the frequency and duty cycle of PWM signal can be measured. In this mode, two input capture channel is used. Channel 1 is configured to capture counter value every rising edge and channel 2 is configured to capture counter value fv falling edge unlike in previous example in this example the counter register value is reset to zero fv rising edge with the time of slave mode so we don't need to capture two successive value for calculating the signal period fv falling edge the counter value will be saved in order to calculate the duty cycle with this formula. You have to add 1 to the capture value because the counter register is start from 0. In QPMX, you have to enable the timer 3, timer 4, and UR2. Timer 3 will be configured in PWM input mode and timer 4 will be configured in PWM output mode. This PWM output signal will be used as an input for the PWM input pin of the timer 3. The UR2 will transmit the frequency and duty cycle to the PC. In timer 3, enable the internal clock and then the PWM input mode on channel 1. You can use channel 2 if you want. In time of work, enable the internal clock and the PWM mode on channel 2. You can also choose another channel if you want. After that, go to clock configuration. Here, I set the clock value to 72 MHz and then go to configuration. Configure the time of work. Set the prescaler to 18 and the counter period to 1024. This is the same setting as in the previous example, so if you calculate the frequency, the result is about 3.9 kHz. And then set the PWM mode 1, enable the fast mode, and set the PWM pulse to 384, so the duty cycle will be 37.5%. Click OK and then configure the timer tree. Set the reload value to the maximum value and then set the polarity for channel 1 to rising edge and then the polarity for channel 2 will be selected to falling edge automatically so whenever there is a rising edge and falling edge on input pin then the counter value will be safe after that go to NPIC settings and enable the timer 3 global interrupt the interrupt will be occurred whenever the counter value is captured in channel 1 register and also the channel 2 register. Click OK and then generate the code. Here in Mind.c, add the string.s library and then add these variables. Here you have to start the timer form in PWM output mode for channel 2 and then start the Timer 3, channel 1, and channel 2 in input capture mode. Inside the main loop, these codes will send the frequency and the duty cycle to PC by using UART every 2 seconds. And finally, here is the interrupt callback function. This function will calculate the frequency and duty cycle. 
The interrupt is occurred at the rising and falling edge, but we only read and calculate the frequency and duty cycle at the rising edge interrupt by using this if statement. After that, you can build and download the code. This is the result. I connect the PWM output pin of timer 4 to the input capture pin of timer 3. Then, I open the serial monitor. Here, the frequency and duty cycle are printed to the serial monitor. Okay, this is the end of this lecture. In this lecture, we have learned how to configure a timer in input capture mode and in PWM input mode. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.